but we're going to move on into our next topic of we're going to look at some MVP front runners and uh Sean because you love talking about the guy and uh I I kind of think if Giselle broke up with him you would Never gonna fight happen. to Never marry gonna you would Never gonna fight happen. to marry Tom Brady I and I think him. that he wouldn't have a choice. I think that you would. I could see you getting into an argument with Matt Damon and Ben Affleck about who loves Tom Brady more. But speaking of Tom Brady, is he the front runner for the MVP right now? It would be six straight uh, AFC conference championships. Okay. Just you, just throwing that you out. You Tony reality yourself. Yeah, two two thousand. Yeah, well, I know I was right. I'm just just fact checking. Okay, I thought uh, you said seven. 2011, they made it. Then 2012, they made mm-hmm. it. Then 2013, they made it. 2014, they made it. 2015, they made it. And that's all because of Tom Brady. Tom Brady has been stupid good, Ricky, since he came back. And I'm saying stupid good. Looking at the three games that he's played, 1,004 passing yards, eight touchdowns, no interception. This is 2010 esque. This is this is Tom Brady for, throwing for three thousand yards, but he doesn't have thirty six touchdowns and, and four. He didn't have Randy Moss that year. I thought he did. Oh, I'm thinking of two thousand eight. Two thousand ten when 2008 he was the two thousand eight. He had Randy Moss. Two thousand seven. Well, two thousand eight Super Bowl is what I'm yeah, thinking. 2008's yeah, two thousand eight when he the tore, David Tyree Super Bowl. Yeah, and I'm thinking yeah. But then two thousand eight was also when he broke his leg or yeah. tore his. Now tore I'm thinking of the shreds. Super Bowl year, not the season year. But go on. I'm talking twenty ten when he was the unanimous MVP. Yeah, uh, I think it was the first ever uh, NFL unanimous unanimous MVP. Twenty ten where he had sixty five percent completion, three thousand nine hundred yards, thirty six touchdowns, four interceptions. Looking at this right now, he's currently. On the, I don't think he's going to be able to keep this up, but currently he's on the pace for mm-hmm. the best completion percentage of his career. I don't think he'll be able to get to the yardage or, or touchdowns, but he, he also might have a shot at at least amount of interceptions he's thrown. Least was four in that year, and obviously it's going to be a little bit different because he's not going to be playing a full 16 se- games like he did, but still, if this team goes undefeated with Tom Brady as their quarterback, mm-hmm. it's going to be so hard to argue with that because, yes, people might be having higher stats and people might be, be uh, showing that, you know, People, you know, people like Matt Ryan might be having historic careers, or Ezekiel Elliott might be having historic seasons. But Tom Brady will still be the most valuable player to his team because he took them from a team that was like, oh, well, can they beat this team with Jimmy Garoppolo and throwing this? In? And you obviously see this vast improvement uh, when, when Tom Brady steps in. Tom Brady has been stupid good. If he keeps on this pace, it's going to be so hard not to give him give him what he's give him what he's done. Well, much. and this is something that I think we all could have predicted. I know I. I didn't expect him to be this good, but I did think that Tom Brady was Did you not expect him to be this good? No, I did. I I expected him to come play pissed off after being suspended for four games. It's not even being pissed off. He's just this damn good. But he... It looks like he's stepping it up just a little no. bit. Th- this is the thing about Tom Brady, and this is the thing I've been trying to tell you, even when you brought up this ridiculous thing mm-hmm. where Jimmy Garoppolo should be the starting quarterback of the Patriots in 2018. <laughs> no, he shouldn't. Tom Brady, his play, does. he's not like Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning had a serious injury, and that's why he, he, he digressed so much. Tom Brady has not had that since 2008, and that injury really hasn't affected his throwing mechanics, where Peyton Manning's throwing mechanics were totally affected by well, his yeah, neck I mean, injury. A neck and uh, what was it? The ACL? Yeah. Did he hit? Yeah, it was. It was the ACL. So the thing with with Brady is that his play style will live up, and he's still growing as a player, mm-hmm. which is, which is phenomenal. So I, I think it's so hard to say that Tom Brady will not be be in the running for for MVP. He's my favorite right now, just from what he's doing. And if he keeps up on this pace, it's going to be so hard to give it to him. But obviously, there's other people in discussion. Well, and I was I'm bringing up some names. I've been looking at other names that these are guys that I think right now we can agree Tom Brady. Um, usually Tom I, Brady's the front runner as of right now. Well, usually I look at best team, mm-hmm. who's the best player on that team. Right now, Patriots are the best team, in in my opinion, in the league. Because, well, I mean, record-wise and power ranking-wise, Patriots are still the best team, in, in my eyes, in the league. And I, I will say best team, best player, Tom Brady. Well, the only thing that I kind of like do the uh, – with that is if somebody's on a team oh, yeah, and, yeah. They're not, and they're not a quarterback – but they're having like a phenomenal no, record-breaking season, and the wins losses isn't because of them. No, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I'm just saying, usually, if we're looking at history, all right, usually a person on one of the best teams in the NFL is going to win because of the season that they're having, because they're the most mm-hmm. valuable player on one of the best teams. That's usually what happens. I mean, that's just usually what happens because usually the best player is leaving their team. It's not saying it's going to be for sure because you know a guy that's kind of. I would say that's kind of you know in, Are you in bring that up the guy that I'm going to bring up in that outlier. 
It's Julio Jones. Oh, I wasn't going to bring him up at all. I would say Julio Jones just from the season that he's having, because Matt Ryan's definitely in in, in that discussion just from how dominant he's been. Uh, even though I was going to bring Falcons up become. a completely different. I know guy. Who you're bringing up. I'll who? Who him. am I bringing up? Matt Stafford. No, who? Ezekiel Elliott. I was going to bring him up too. The reason why I wanted I have, to bring I him up, up was you look at his stats right now. About seven. What was it? Seven hundred and three yards mm-hmm. through six games. If you just do the basic math on that, and you Let's just do that. Divide 703 by six games. That means on average, he's averaging just over 117 yards per game. Times that by 16. He is on pace. He's on pace to break Eric Dickerson's record or very close he's to He's not going to come close to that. Eric Dickerson, no, 2100. No, rookie record. The rookie record. I'm talking rookie the, record. I'm talking the all-time leader. I'm saying That's rookie what record. I'm looking no, at. No, the rookie record. So 1,874.6 repeating is what he's on pace for. That would put him, I'm not even looking at just the rookies, I'm putting that as all-time, just a single-season rushing record. That would put him just, what, six yards behind 11th on that list. Sean Alexander, almost said Sean Anderson, Sean Alexander in 2005 had 1,880 that is insane. Eric Dickerson's rookie record rookie. was 390 carries, 1,808 rushing yards, 18 rushing touchdowns. So yeah, I mean, it, it, or Eric Dickerson currently holds the record. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the the two guys that I weren't, the, the three guys, I'm sorry, that I had that weren't quarterbacks around there was one was Zeke, mm-hmm. just because of the what he what he's been doing. The other guy was Julio Jones. Obviously, as I mentioned him, he's been historic. I mean, the reason why Matt Stafford has so many passing yards is because of Julio Jones. Yeah. The other guy was AJ Green, just because well, AJ Matt, Green you is mean kind Matt of Matt Ryan, not Matt Stafford. Yeah, Matt Ryan. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm thinking. That's the other quarterback I have. Well, you were thinking Calvin Johnson. Yeah, he's, well, not, well, he's not in the league anymore. And then I had Julio Jones and AJ Green, just because mm-hmm. both of them have been so dominant and so important to their team. See, but here's the thing with AJ Green and, and like AJ Green and Julio Jones, like I feel like they're at the biggest disadvantage because I feel like the front runners, based on what position they play, Stafford, Ryan, and Brady, just because the quarterback position and what it means. I would to say Zeke over Ryan. NFL. I would say Zeke over Ryan. So I would say Brady, Stafford, Zeke. Well, the thing that Zeke does is he's that second where running back can be so important. However, the thing that I mean, the thing that with Zeke that makes him where he can go above someone is because he's having such a almost rec- like rookie record breaking season. But if he picks it up just a little bit. And if he the Cowboys could, stay where they he are, he could too. be in a discussion for top ten best single season rushing of anybody, not just rookies, of anybody. He's just got to pick up the pace by a little bit more, and he can get into the top. 10. Well, that's that's something he's been doing too. I mean, if you look at if you, if you take out the first two games mm-hmm. and then take that average, I think he's averaging over like 115 yards rushing per mm-hmm. game. Because uh, he had a bad game against the Giants to start off his career, 20 carries for 51 yards. But then other than that, I think most of those games have still been impressive. I think his lowest out of those games was 83 yards in the second in the second week. So Zeke Zeke is Zeke is up there just because of what he's doing historically. So I would say Brady Stafford Zeke for me because Stafford's having one of the, his best seasons. That's without Calvin, Calvin Johnson. He's leading his team to victories. Mm-hmm. So a team like the Lions that were you know pegged by most people at eight and eight, nine and seven. If he gets into the playoffs at like ten and six, eleven and five, Lions are definitely Matt Stafford's definitely gonna be in. in and especially in that he's equation. he's doing it without a guy and like without this, a guy like this is the thing where Julio it Jones, makes yeah. like Tom Brady excel like he excels the quarterback position he transcends it. But the thing that I'm gonna say Brady and Stafford have in common is yes Brady has a Gronk or Brady has an Edelman, but let's be honest neither of these guys have that one wide receiver where it's like he's the best wide receiver in the league, that's who he's got to go to, like when Brady had a Randy Moss. I know that Gronk is the guy he can lean on, and basically Gronk could be that guy, so then you could say Stafford's the true guy who doesn't have that. I would I would say that Stafford is the guy that doesn't have a, a guy like that. Marvin Jones has been great, Golden Tate has been good recently, but I would say Brady likes Gronk the is the greatest around. tight end of all time. No, he is. And it, I, so, it's the Patriots have weapons, but the thing I like most about Tom Brady, and this has been throughout his career, he'll spread the ball out. If Gronk ain't open a game, he's not going to force feed it to Gronk. No, he's, he's going to feed it to the guys who are open. But still, Gronk is no, I know Gronk, Gronk is still open all the time, <laughs> even when he's not. Even when he's not. So that's the thing. Like it's it's I, I know where you're going from, and I totally understand. But it, I think it's 
I would say that Steph, Tom Brady makes everyone else better too. Yeah, but I would I would say on a, like for sure Stafford by far is the guy that doesn't have that go to guy mm-hmm. where it's where he's one of the best at his position. Marvin Jones has been great. Golden Tate has been good recently, but you know Gronk's still the best tight end. Edelman's one of the best possession receivers. So I think it's difficult to say that. I'm going to bring up one guy before I ask one last question, and this is a guy who maybe not MVP is kind of like the odd man out here, but in fantasy, this guy has been uh, pretty dang good. But uh, David Johnson, 681 yards right now. Do you see a situation where maybe if Zeke falls back out of at least those two where we flip it and it's we're talking David Johnson in the discussion instead of Zeke? See, the thing thing that it's so hard with guys like A.J. Green or guys at the running back Mm -hmm. position or – wide receiver position is because you got to break records you have to break records or your team has to be really good and they have to be good because of you so the cardinals at the position they currently in are in i don't see like yeah they're there because of david johnson like i david Mm -hmm. johnson's the lone bright spot but i don't think that means mvp i think that he's having a fantastic season don't get me wrong here but you know with with a guy like zeke he's on a team that's five and one and he's you know he's close to breaking the rookie record and he's there's so much hype going into him that's why he's being discussed here with julio jones you know his team started off really hot they've been bad in the past two weeks or well one week they've been bad because that lead to the Chargers, and then obviously now with the the week before with the the possible Richard Sherman armbar pass mm-hmm. interference that wasn't called. Um, I th- but, but what we're trying to say is it's so hard for those guys to win it. I don't think that if Dave Johnson's not in the discussion now, I don't think he will be at week seventeen, past week seventeen. Let's put it this way: the last, let's say I'm going to go back to two thousand and four. Since two thousand and four, we've only had three players not a quarterback, win the award of MVP. They've all been running backs. Do you want to try to guess the three, or do you want AP to in that year. won. AP in that year that he almost won. 2012. That's when uh, he came back and broke the, almost broke the record. And then the other two were back-to-back oh, 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 oh. in 05-06. 05-06. Oh, oh, uh, Ray Lewis? Nope. Ray Lewis really? is a linebacker. Oh, running backs. Running, running backs. backs. Sorry. Uh, Sean Alexander. 05, yep. Sean Alexander, who was 06. Was that what LT broke the record? That is LT. Boom. So look at what you have to do to try to even get into. And that 05 season. That's so good, guys. That 05 season, that was the 1800 or almost 1900 rushing season that I mentioned for Sean Alexander earlier in this segment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what you have to do to outbeat a quarterback if you're not a quarterback. Yeah. I think, I just think that it's, 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 it, it, looking at the, the the history of it too, it's just so hard to to win as someone who's not a quarterback. And I'm that's why re- Peyton Manning won five. And I'm really quickly right now. I'm curious. The last wide receiver to win the MVP zero, and a wide receiver has never won the MVP unless we go to like the Pro Football Writers Association where Jerry Rice won it in '87. Yeah, I think I think the only person that would ever come close was Calvin in his year that he almost break, mm-hmm. broke Jer- Jerry's record. So yeah, but uh, this is where you guys come in. Let us know who your front runner is. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to ask you, Sean. Besides Tom Brady, Tom Brady, we're going to put him as the front runner. Besides him, who's number two right now? Uh, didn't I say Stafford? No, Did I you? said Zeke. I said Zeke. Zeke. I'm going to say Zeke as well. I thought you were going to go with Stafford, but yeah, I'm going to say Zeke as well. But it's now, Tom Brady. Tom Brady's going to win it by the end of the year. Yeah. Now this is where you guys come in. Let us know down below. Who's your front runner? What do you guys think of the conversation? Who could be an MVP candidate or MVP challenger as we get to the end of the season? Don't know if you know if I'm a Tom Brady fan, though. No, you are a huge Tom Brady Didn't fan. Didn't know if that was widely known. Throughout. Huge Tom Brady fan, but let us know down in the description 